वेलकम एवरी वन टू दूट्यूब चैनल अब जुलजिकल सोसाइटी अफ आसाम लेट अस डिस्कस टूडे ए भेरि इम्पर्टेन्ट टपिक दैट इज कम्बाइंड कन्सेप्ट अफ लिमिटिंग फैक्टर्स हुईच इज ए पार्ट अफ लज अफ लिमिटिंग फैक्टर्स सो द प्रेजेंटेशन उल गिव मेन इनसाइट ऑन द सेंट्रल कन्सेप्ट अफ द कम्बाइंड कन्सेप्ट अफ लिमिटिंग फैक्टर्स एंड इट्स एक्सप्लेनेशन यूटिलिटी अफ लिमिटिंग फैक्टर कन्सेप्ट and the last one the different approaches to the determination of the limiting factors so what is the central concept of this combined concept of limiting factors the presence and success of an organism or a group of organisms depends upon complex of conditions certain materials and conditions are very necessary for the growth and reproduction of organism suppose a farmer plants wheat in a field which contains too little nitrogen so it will stop growing when it has used up the available nitrogen even if other components are present in sufficient quantities in this particular case nitrogen is the limiting factor again any condition which approaches or exceeds the limits of tolerance is said to be the limiting condition or limiting factor from this it is quite clear that any factor which approaches or exceeds the limits of tolerance is said to be the limiting condition or, or limiting factor so by combining the two laws that is one leibniz law of minimum and the concept of limits of tolerance one can give a very useful definition of limiting factors organisms in nature are mainly controlled by the quantity and the variability of materials which are present in minimum requirement and physical factors which are critical and the limits of tolerance of an organism to this and other components of the environment so this model summarizes the general principles of limiting factors as per fry 1947 from this figure it is clear that there always occurs a potential range for different activities like metabolism etc which has two ranges one is upper range and another is lower range and between these two ranges there exists this potential range of activity but due to different factors like availability availability of the resources changes climatic condition etc the animal generally seem to shift its range of activities here the dotted line represents the potential range of activities and the solid lines represents the actual range of activity of a species so what is the utility of limiting factor concept the seal fellow of the concept of limiting factors lies in the fact that it gives an ecologist an entering wedge into the study of complex situation so this law is possibly the more precise indication of the natural complexity its individual or population is subjected to an ecological change that cope up with the minimum and maximum capacity to any complex environmental factors so the range where it is carried out from minimum to the maximum signify the limit of tolerance for that particular organism again environmental relations of organisms are very complex so that is fortunate that not all possible factors are of equal importance as the relationship among organisms is very complex so in a given situation it is very fortunate that all factors are not quite necessary for an animal in equal way some fact some factors are weaker than the others one can discover this weak links and find this condition to be critical or limiting so by studying limiting factors it becomes very useful for an ecologist to study the weak links that exist in ecosystem and to identify the limiting or the critical factors so what are the different approaches to the determination of the limiting factors it is very important for ecologist to realize the aims of the environmental analysis in terms of limiting factors they also have to consider through observation analysis and experiments which factor is significant and how the factor brings effect 
on the individual population and community. So the significant methods of identifying the limiting factors are as follows. First one, by identification of the weak links. If an organism has wide limit of tolerance for relatively constant factor present in moderate quantity in the environment, then that factor is not likely to be the limiting. Conversely, if an organism is known to have definite limits of tolerance for a factor that is also a variable in environment, then the factor deserves careful study because it might be limiting one. Example, oxygen is so abundant and constant and readily available in above ground terrestrial environment that it is rarely limiting to the land organisms except to the parasites or organisms living in soil or at high altitudes. On the other hand, oxygen is relatively scarce and of extreme variable in water and thus it often an important limiting factor to the aquatic organisms, especially the animals. Now second one, by combining field observation with laboratory experiments. Physical requirements may be well within any limits of tolerance, but still organisms may fail due to the biological interactions between them. So field observation and laboratory work must go hand in hand. If necessity, individuals are have to isolate it from population and community. By studying animal distribution at the edges of the ranges is another approach for studying the limiting factors. Often a good way to determine which factors are limiting to the organisms is to study their distribution and behavior at the edges of their ranges. In such marginal situation, one or more environmental factors may undergo sudden or dramatic changes, just thus setting up a natural experiments, which is often supervised to a lab experiment. In this case, it is seen that some factors under considerable con consideration continue to vary in a normal manner instead of being controlled in an abnormal or constant manner. Some tree-line studies are classic example of this type of investigation. However, field studies do not always provide the full answer and lab experiments are sometimes needed to isolate the effective causes of the phenomenon under study. Certain birds which have extended their breeding ranges provide some important examples of this type of approach. Next one is the nutrient exper uh, enrichment experiment. Here, artificial enrichment experiments are mainly used. In this type of experiments, nutrients are purposefully added to a system in order to determine which nutrient will cause an increase in production and the biomass. It is addition of the limiting nutrients that causes eutrophication. Addition of non-limiting nutrients will not result in increased biomass. So, the nutrients that causes increased growth should be prevented from entering the system. The background knowledge of the ecosystem and sufficient knowledge of the same ecosystem is very needed for the successful running of the experiment. Again, for this trial and error fertilization of the pond or lake in terms of productivity, this type of experience are also used. So the last one is the transplant experiment. In answering the question of limitation of distribution of animals, the best way to determine the source of limitation is through the transplant experiment. Over the age, transplant experiments have been considered as the best standard for testing the niche constraints or range limits. These experiments directly assess the availability of individuals to survive and reproduce when beyond the range. In such experiments, the animals are allowed to move to an unoccupied area to determine whether it can survive and reproduce in the totally new environment. 
two probable outcomes are associated with this experiment and these are the first one if the area is totally inaccessible and if the animal fails to recognize a suitable habitat due to the non-availability of available resources, then one can interpret that the transplant experience is a totally successful one. Again, if the distribution is limited as the area may be preoccupied by some other species or if some physical and chemical factors are quite limited, then the outcome will be the transplant experiment will be totally unsuccessful one. So this shows the results of the transplantation experiment. From this figure, we can understand that if a species become absent in an area, then this may be due to the dispersal. So if the dispersal is the case, then it may be that the area is inaccessible to the species. And if dispersal is no, then this may be due to the change of the behavior. If really change of the behavior occurs, then due to the habitat selection it occurs. The animal or the species may prefer some habitat for the availability of the resource and for due to the other factors. And if this change of behavior is not associated with this dispersal, then there may be the issue of some other species interaction like predation, parasitism, competition and disease. And if somehow other species are not involved, then some physical and chemical factors may be involved. Physical factors like temperature, humidity, soil moisture, fire, etc. And chemical factors like water, oxygen, salinity, pH, etc. So, for any queries, you can contact me in my email ID that is deporbil at the rate of gmail.com. Thank you.